Hi guys, Nurse Oz here. Hey, um, today we're going to be talking about assisting with medical emergencies and emergency preparedness. Um, this is something that everybody should um, be uh, thinking of for the future. Um, so just follow along with me. Take notes if you'd like to. Um, you should be able to spell the terms uh, that you learned for this chapter and identify the steps in the primary assessment. Okay. Um, medical office since you guys will primarily be working in the medical office um, for conditions that pose no immediate danger to life or limb um, you might have minor emergencies or a physician group practices may um, have an emergency clinic where emergency services are both provided during and before um, after hours clinics type stuff okay um, there are freestanding clinics and urgent care centers um, these are for conditions that need to be treated quickly, but that are not life-threatening, such as broken bones, urinary tract infections, um, wounds, that type of thing, uh, stitches. Um, these provide emergency care during regular hours um, until late in the evening um, and often on weekends. So usually their hours are from like 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, but many do not offer critical care interventions uh, for life-threatening conditions such as you know um, cardiac arrest or um, if you have like head trauma they're not going to have a ct scan to be able to um, look at somebody's brain to see if they have uh, a traumatic brain injury or anything like that um, hospital and emergency departments for the most part emergency including those that are life-threatening um, this is what that's for okay they have 24-hour emergency apartments or EDs is what they're referred to in the um, healthcare field that are open seven days a week and there are 27 uh, 24 7 emergency emergency departments um, that can handle most emergencies and then arrange transport um, to critical care trauma centers for instance um, up north there is Deaconess uh, North emergency um, department there and they can treat somebody there get them stabilized and then transport them to deaconess or a life flight them somewhere else depending on the severity of the uh, situation um, critical care, center, care centers are for life-threatening conditions that require specialized critical care so these are like hospitals that have um, ICU beds that require you know um, very uh, urgent care um, that are um, patients that have lots of needs um, and they have a lower to nurse um, staff ratio, um, patient ratio than they would at a normal um, hospital area. Um, so critical centers, care centers such as hospitals have specially trained physicians, surgeons, anesthesiologists, and other care, uh, critical care staff on duty at all times. So these people are ready to handle any trauma, uh, cardiac problems, burns, uh, they could be surgical centers, um, those types of things. Um, emergency medical services or EMS, okay, these are the people that provide pre-hospital emergency care and, um, and safe, uh, they pr prompt transportation from any location to a hospital um, or other appropriate facility. So when you call 911, they will dispatch the paramedics and usually, um, which are the people in the, um, ambulance as long as firefighters to the scene um, for evaluation um, so there are four nationally recognized le levels of ems practitioners so there is an emr which is an emergency medical responder okay there's emergency medical technician which is an emt there's an advanced emergency medical te technician which is an a emt and a paramedic okay so typically paramedics are um, any of those kind of people can be with the fire department they could be cross-trained those types of things as well as um, working with the um, ambulance providers okay um, so an emergency medical responder they provide uh, immediate basic life-saving care while they're waiting from response from higher level ems practitioners so these are going to be mainly your firefighters they're usually the first ones on scene while you're waiting for an ambulance because those can take a while okay um, the EMT provides basic emergency care um, for um, specific medications and transport to a hospital or other appropriate facility for definitive care. 
The advanced uh, EMT provides basic emergency ca medical care and some advanced care, so administration of somewhat broader range of medications and they specialize in transport. Okay. And then the paramedic provides all of the care that an EMT or AEMT provides in, um, plus advanced emergency care. And they can use a variety of medications and transport. They can usually um, insert an advanced airway if the, their trachea is collapsed or something like that, or they're not breathing on their own. Uh, first responders, okay. Um, this is what uh, sometimes is used to, um, is referred to as the EMR, the emergency medical responder. Um, it could be either a policeman or a firefighter trained as an emergency medical response uh, person or responder. Um, sometimes they're used to mean any EMS practitioner at any level training who first responds to an emergency. So the first one basically on scene. Um, paramedics and advanced EMTs are um, trained to use advanced airway devices to intubate. Okay, uh, they may start IVs um, in seconds. Uh, they carry ample oxygen supplies and assortment of emergency medications um, in case of um, cardiac arrest or those types of things. And they are able to perform other invasive procedures um, to help the patient uh, have the best chance of survival. Uh, the role of emergency medical services is to provide on-scene intervention and treatment, okay? They prepare the patient um, with injuries, trauma, or, il or illness for transport to the local hospital. And they transport the patient um, to the emergency facility via ambulance, helicopter, or fixed wing aircraft, okay? Um, they can also transfer the patient to uh, medical personnel at the receiving facility as well and um, do a handoff report uh, and notify the physician or the, the staff that's waiting for that patient um, to give them a kind of a brief rundown of what's going on with the patient. So here is some EMS personnel. These look like they could be firefighters as well as an, um, an ambulance person. So EMS um, personnel are accustomed to working with other healthcare professionals, okay? The EMT or paramedic may ask office staff for all pertinent patient information. Um, there's gonna be somebody taking, um, recording the whole scenario um, so they can hand it off to um, the hospital staff when they get there, okay? Um, they are in charge of ensuring the patient information accompanies the patient to the facility, and they may transmit information by radio uh, to the facility um, to let them know what's going on and what they can expect when they get there. Okay. Um, communication between the medical assistant and EMS personnel is vital for patients' continuity of care. So it's um, good to have good commu communication skills and remain, remain calm during the situation. Okay. Um, so uh, specialized resources, okay, um, in the Spokane area and the um, national area, uh, we have poison control, um, and I'll tell you that phone number um, in just a second. Um, we have pediatrics, we have a trauma department, we have burns department. Um, if burns are too bad here in Spokane, they usually will like flight people over to Harborview, um, which is a burn trauma um, specialty hospital. Um, but the MA should ensure that the specialist telephone numbers are readily accessible um, in case um, they are needed. Okay. So we talked a little bit about Good Samaritan laws with CPR. Um, the state law holds uh, that medical professionals are not legally liable when rendering first aid or uh, medical care to somebody. Once a medical professional has decided to provide care, uh, he or she is committed to rendering such care according to the scope of your practice and your licensure, your certification or training, um, given the resources that are available at the scene. A uh, medical professional must remain with the patient as long as the scene is safe until relieved by another healthcare provider uh, with professional training equal or higher to your level of training. So. Um, it's good to also be aware of laws within your own state. Uh, remember that you must meet the standard of care within your license, certification, or training. So if you're not doing compressions deep enough on somebody and they die, um, you know, that's possibly not, not a good thing for anybody involved. All right, so emergency plans must review, be reviewed on a regular basis. 
Okay. Uh, local law enforcement and emergency management agencies uh, direct rescue treatment um, and transportation efforts after a catastrophic event. Um, in an emergency or disaster, healthcare professionals are expected to provide care within uh, your available resources that you might have in your clinic if needed. Okay. Um, patients with little hope of survival may not be treated. So if they're um, actively bleeding out because they had both of their legs amputated in an earthquake and a piece of heavy rebar fell on them and damaged both of their femoral arteries. Um, your job, I know it sounds horrible, is to move on to the patient that has more hope of survival than that patient if they're already bleeding out and they're suffering from shock. Okay, um, so patients with very severe injuries may be diverted to trauma centers, um, and then patients with mild or non-life-threatening injuries will be deferred until after life-threatening, but survivable injuries have been treated. Um, and MAs need to handle emergencies in these situations. So on the telephone, um, when a patient or a patient's relative calls to ask for advice for an emergency that is occurring outside of the office, Okay. Typically, MAs don't give medical advice over the phone, um, like you're not a triage person. So they will have, your clinic will probably have a triage nurse who will, um, you will refer that person to if they have questions about their child or a loved one. Um, when an emergency occurs near the doctor's office and someone brings the patient to the office, um, you can direct them to um, your nearest um clinic room or your procedure room and get the patient stabilized, um, you know, do uh, local first aid, you know, apply pressure, apply a tourniquet, um, depending on what the patient needs. Um, and then also you need to, when an emergency occurs in the office setting, so somebody may um, uh, go into cardiac arrest while they're in the office, then it's your job to um, care for the patient as well. Uh, the AMA must quickly decide if a patient requires emergency care, so you must um, have those critical thinking skills. Uh, an AMA may ask a physician for advice at any time um, or activate the EMS system by calling 911, okay? Typically, um, when you are in a clinic, you do need to dial 911. Um, the firefighters will come first and then the ambulance will come, um, but you need to get that um, emergency response um, chain going as soon as possible. Um, there might be a decision tree sometimes created by a physician for the MA to use in triaging people depending on the scenario or how many people are involved. Um, in some states, triage is not within the scope of practice of medical assistance, and that's typically true here in the state of Washington. Uh, most clinics, like I said, will have an RN that will be uh, triaging people um, over the phone or guiding people um, appropriately. So we're going to talk about primary assessment, okay? Um, we want to determine the patient's name, their approximate age and gender, okay? We want to determine if the patients need for intervention. Do they need intervention? Um, and do we need to um, obtain the history of a certain event um, that caused injury or harm to the patient? Um, you also want to obtain a past medical history, um, gather any medication information that the patient may have, um, and determine if they have any allergies, and then always take vital signs. So some critical thinking questions are um, to see if the patient cannot or will not tell you his or her name. Okay, what do you do in that situation? And then um, what do you do if the patient cannot remember his or her medications or they have too many to list? Okay, um, it might be good to have a family member um, with them or get that information later from somebody, um, see if they have an emergency contact in their chart or something like that, okay? Um, so life-threatening conditions that require immediate interventions are extreme shortness of breath, okay? So that include, includes asthma, um, people with COPD, um, people with bronchitis or something of that nature. It could be anaphylaxis, okay? Uh, cardiac arrest, severe uh, uncontrolled bleeding, uh, head injuries, poisoning, open chest or abdominal wounds, and shock, okay? Um, Life-threatening conditions that require also immediate intervention are severe burns, including your face, hands, feet, and genitals, and then potential neck injuries. Uh, things that are not uh, life-threatening but do require immediate intervention are decreased levels of consciousness, chest pain, and seizures. 
not life-threatening, um, but that also require immediate intervention or uh, major multiple fractures. So if they were involved in like a car accident or something like that, any ne neck or spinal injuries, um, severe eye injuries need to be dealt with right away. Um, and then burns not on the face, hands, feet, or genitals. Um, also not life-threatening um, conditions that uh, need intervention as soon as possible, um, which these are things that you would see at like an urgent care, which are severe vomiting and diarrhea, especially in the very young and the very elderly. So generally we um, define that is under the age of five and over the age of 60. Um, minor injuries, sprains, strains, and simple fractures. Um, this is an emergency crash card, which I don't have one here, but we need to get one. Um, also, um, the emergency crash kit is used to store emergency medications, um, intubation equipment that um, the provider can use to intubate the patient if needed if you're working in a clinic. It has needles and syringes, um, all assortments of uh, small instruments, a resuscitator, a defibrillator, oxygen, and airway and suction devices, as well as medications that might be used to help um, give advanced uh, cardiac life support for patients. Uh, the medical assistant should do routine checks on the emergency supplies in the crash cart, including restocking, uh, making sure that the medications in there are not expired, um, replacing used items, okay, and then replacing or charging the batteries in certain items. Uh, and then also uh, mock practice sessions should help MAs become more familiar with the equipment that's in the crash cart. Um, I think that this will be a great uh, opportunity for us to do this sometime but I'm not sure what. All right, so drugs that are commonly stored in the emergency um, crash kit are activated charcoal. So that generally will help um, people that have taken too, many, too much of a medication. Uh, they put charcoal in their stomach to help soak up that um, uh, medication and then they suck it out, have their stomach pumped. Uh, atropine, uh, diphenhydramine, which is Benadryl, uh, epinephrine, furosemide, which is Lasix, to help get rid of any um, excess fluid on the patient, uh, instant glucose and insulin, lidocaine, local anesthetics, uh, nitroglycerin for angina and normal saline, uh, phenobarbital and diazepam is usually not stored in a crash cart in a uh, clinical setting um, because they're considered controlled substances. Um, sodium bicarbonate, uh, solucortef, and verapamil, uh, which is a medication to help with cardiac arrest. And that's what I know about that.